Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Pastor Philip Johnson, a patient coordinator here at Spinago Wellness. And we're glad that you're joining us here today to hear another story. Um, and Kurt, these are uh, wonderful opportunities uh, where we share with the people that look at this um, opportunities of healing mm -hmm. and uh, the personal side of what takes place. So I have a very special uh, guest here with us. Tell us your first name. I'm Kurt. And what state are you from? Florida. All right, so you're right here where we're at. We're in Palm mm -hmm. Harbor, Tampa Bay area, so you're in Florida. So uh, how old are you? I am 55. So you're 55. Let's begin your story. When uh, when did you start having symptoms? When did the suffering begin? It was about seven years ago I started having uh, headaches, and I've never really had headaches my whole life. Okay. And I've always been very healthy and very active and, and physically fit and I just started having really bad headaches. So uh, I thought maybe I had a pinched nerve. So I went to a chiropractor, you know, because I could feel it in the back of my neck, mm -hmm. and uh, went to a chiropractor, and then I started realizing uh, that I had a light sensitivity. I remember sitting in his office thinking, why do they have mm -hmm. such bright lights? And I kept thinking, it's everybody else. You know, everybody's got their brights on on the, on the highway. I'm flashing my brights at him. You know, what's wrong with these people, okay. you know? <laughs> so he treated me for a while, and then he thought, well, maybe I had a brain tumor. And so he sent me for an MRI, and that came back okay. And I thought because my face, you know, first I thought my face was just hurting so much because I was always squinting, okay. and my face was was cramping. Maybe my face hurt so much. Thought maybe I had an impacted molar. So I went to a dentist. They took all X-rays, said everything was okay, but they saw some infection in my sinuses. So I went to an ear, nose, and throat guy. Okay. And he told me, Oh yeah, you need this surgery where they put the balloons up in your sinuses and Yikes. expand the balloons, and it crushes the the, the, the bones, and then your headaches will go away. Ah. So sixty-four thousand dollars later, thank God for insurance. I breathe better than I've ever breathed okay. in my whole life. But the headaches were still there, and uh, even getting worse. So uh, my regular doctor thought maybe it was a neuropathy, put me on uh, Lyrica, which I hated, but the headaches were, were so bad in it, and it was getting worse and worse to the point where uh, if glare hit me or something, it would be so bad it was intolerable. I had to get home. The only place I could get totally dark was my bathroom, and I would get in the bathroom with the door closed, and I would curl up on the bathroom floor, my and goodness. I could recharge my brain. Maybe like 45 minutes, I found it was like the magic number I could function after 45 minutes in complete darkness. But it's so hard to block out the pain when it's in your head. Plus, I was getting foggy. I, I, I've always been a voracious reader. I mean, I would always, always had a book in my pocket. Okay. Everywhere I went, if I had to wait two minutes or more, I'd be reading it, read a couple books a week. I could not focus to to read anymore I would you know I would read one page flip the page I couldn't remember what I just read couldn't do math oh my gosh I was making mistakes in math I've always been able to just I could look at you know complex numbers and immediately do it in my head okay the, the pain in my face hurting so bad so my doctor sent me to a neurologist and he uh, asked me a question he asked me about blows to the head I says oh my gosh at work I get hit all the time I'm always hitting my head okay for 30 years I move real fast all the time and I would jump on the forklift a certain way because I'm kind of tall and have to scrunch down. Boom, I would land in the seat pool. The thing was right there. Bang, bang. And, oh my gosh, I know the thing is there. I'm blaming myself. Why do I keep hitting my head? But I guess I was in a brain fog. So my neurologist sent me to a guy uh, who worked with boxers and uh, athletes at University of Miami, people that hit their head a lot. And he asked me a lot of questions. He said, well, I have something that's both a diagnostic and a treatment. If it works, then it's a treatment. Very, very painful nerve block shots because he thought I had tried general neuralgia, which I'd never heard of before. So uh, he gave me these shots, the most painful shots I'd ever have in my life. And then he just stands there and says, oh, you feeling better? And uh -huh. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> what is with this? And also my face started relax and my whole body relaxed. I was able to take off, and I haven't said for a couple of years now, I have had to wear wrap around at this time, a couple of years, these wrap around sunglasses okay. and a hat. And I found out that a hat, I had to have the hat to block the light. There's no way I could have sat here even in, indoors without the hat and the sunglasses because it would just kill my head and I, and I would not be able to, to do anything. So in his office, I took off my glasses. I looked up at the light and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I just started sobbing. It was like a miracle. So uh, like I was afraid of, within a few weeks, it started coming back. Okay. And then I went to another pain specialist that had me even doing these drops of lidocaine to numb things. You know, oh I, didn't, I didn't know you could stick something this far 
in, in your nose. My wife said she almost passed out the first time she saw him, saw him do it. And that would help a little bit. Lidocaine patches on my face, that would help a little bit. And I could not sleep. That was another bad thing. Oh my gosh, for years. I would lay down in bed, my wife, boom, she hits the pillow and she's asleep. I would be tossing and turning, trying to stay still so I don't wake her up. Could not sleep, could not sleep, could not sleep. So uh, I had a box fall on my head the next day. I blanked out while I was driving the tractor trailer on 995 and I was 20 miles from where I was supposed to be and I'm thinking, gosh, what, what am I doing here? And I look at the bills and I had made three deliveries where I signed the bill and the other people signed the bill and I had no memory of it. And I said, that's it, I, I have to stop. And the same day, glare hit me in the, in the eye in the afternoon from behind a building and I hear, Rrr! and I look and a woman there in a van with kids almost hit me in the side of the truck I looked in the other mirror, I had gone through a stop sign because I had closed my eyes. So I said, that's it, I'm gonna do what the doctor said and stop working. So uh, <clears throat> I read an article about Lyme disease with all these symptoms. I said, oh my gosh, I got this symptom, that symptom, this symptom, these different things. So I went to the doctor, he said, well, I don't think you have Lyme. You know, we don't have Lyme in Florida, but we'll test you for it. And it, and it came back negative. So, okay, I don't have that. And then maybe a year later, there's this article about Bernie Kozar, the quarterback, with his concussions, and yep. he was treated at Spinaga Wellness Center in Palm Harbor, and, and his great recovery, and he had a lot of the same symptoms. So I came here thinking I had just the brain trauma, but because Dr. Spinaga is so thorough with all of the testing, that's mm -hmm. the, the guy is so cutting edge, he's such a genius, and really has researched all of this. Uh, we did all this testing and come to find out I have a mutated gene where I cannot make antibodies mm -hmm. for Lyme or for mold. Those two things go together and that's one reason why uh, I tested negative for Lyme because they test for antibodies and if there's no antibodies there then it's negative. Have Lyme. So of course I tested negative for Lyme. So I found out I have the Lyme and they started treating me and the second week I was here, plus they, they'll start you on supplements, different things. He really is knowledgeable about how to heal the body. He doesn't just treat the symptom, he goes for the cure, cures the problem, right. instead of just treating the symptom, which is absolutely incredible. Such a godsend that I come to a place for head trauma and I have Lyme and mold and then find out I'm in the best place in the world for Lyme and mold. The guy who knows more about it than yeah. anybody. Incredible. So the second week I was here, my face started relaxing and feeling so much better. My and I was able to sleep all night long. Oh my I was able God. to go and lay down within 20 minutes, go to sleep. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, I could go back to sleep again. <laughs> just unbelievable. It was just so incredible. And it started getting more energy and uh, a, you know, as treatment went along, there's, there's different phases, you know, it has to uh, get out of your bloodstream first, whatever's free-flowing. Yeah, free and then if there's biofilm, which uh, another reason why a lot of times people test negative is because the Lyme and the other parasites that usually go along with Lyme co-infections yeah. uh, can get wrapped up in this biofilm and it's protecting it from your immune system and and from antibiotics and from the, the testing it's a little bit of a roller coaster because you get it out of your bloodstream you're feeling good and then you know like dr smog says he hates killing the bugs because it really makes you it makes you feel bad but you got to you got to push through and hang in there and have a yeah. positive attitude and you really do great so they they break up the biofilm then and they have a, a what they call a fry test where they have actual pictures of your your blood cells mm -hmm. and then one that's I think a 400 magnification where you can see the biofilm and see the Lyme spirochetes yeah. and the cysts and everything that, yeah. the, that the Lyme's make the different uh, ways that the Lyme are mm -hmm. and uh, they can see it so it does something to bust the biofilm so now it breaks loose again it's in your bloodstream so now you're feeling crappy again you know <laughs> but you, you know you, ex you expect it and you, and you just push through because you know you're getting better then the next phase was to get it out of my brain because the, the, the Lyme uh, congregates in your brain and ironically it's the same place where I had a lot of the head trauma in the front and, and also along this time uh, I think it was even before I came here I was talking to a friend I used to work with and I told him oh yeah I found out I have head injuries he says oh yeah I thought I killed you that time ah. I says what are you talking about he tells me this whole story about 10 years ago 11 years ago now 
that, that we were closing up the terminal on a Friday, pulling down these big heavy overhead doors. You have to pull them real hard because the rails are messed up. He pulls down the thing real hard. He turns and looks and he said, I was pull, bent down pulling up a, a dock plate that goes to the trailers. Yep. And the door hit me on the head, knocked me down, thought I was dead. He said, I came around. He was on his 30 days probationary period and he would have gotten fired immediately. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, he said that I, that I said, got up and said, you know, that's okay. What are you going to do? Put a splint on it, <laughs> which I know that's what, what I always said, you know, so I know he's telling me the truth, but I had no memory of this. Thinking back, I realized that's really when I stopped being able to read. Okay. So anyways, uh, we get to the phase where it's pushing the stuff out of my brain. Oh my gosh, my brain wakes up. I go to the grocery store. I open the cell flyer. I'm automatically doing the, the math, converting right. things. Oh my gosh, I'm able to look at a computer. It used to be 10, 10, 15 minutes on the computer. My eyes would start hurting so bad and, 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 and you know, bouncing around. Couldn't stand it. Reading books, I'm able to read now and comprehend. So now, of course, I'm studying about the lime and the mold. We're uh, three quarters away, I guess, through our treatment. <clears throat> something like that. Right, yeah. Okay. So now, I'm, uh, so now because you know, when they flush the things out, it'll it'll uh, kind of overwhelm your liver. And when the Lyme spirochetes die, they produce ammonia. So the ammonia livers get high, and your liver function will will go down. I guess it is that, that's bad. And um, so now we've uh, detoxed enough and, and got it out to where that's good and can handle more. So we're going to finish off killing the, the co-infection things, the uh, Protomozoa rheumatica, which is something that gets in your red blood cells. And I think that maybe comes from mosquitoes, not everybody More likely that. mosquitoes, right. right. And just about everybody that has the Lyme that I've met also has the mold. And some of the mold symptoms are worse than the Lyme symptoms. And come to find out all this time that I'm shut up in my house with the blinds down, every time the air conditioner comes on, I'm getting sicker because it's in my air conditioning <laughs> in system. Air system. So we so we got that remediated and got it out and it's such a joy now. The first time I went home after that and I walk in the garage, Man, my garage smells good. I never knew the garage smelled bad. So it's um, it, it's really great. It's wonderful. Every time the air conditioner came on, and I knew that when it when it came on, my eyes would start hurting worse, oh and my, my face would hurt a little more. But I thought it was just the air moving around or something, or something wrong because of my light sensitivity. It had something to do with that because it's not bothering my wife. But my wife doesn't have the gene. She can she can detox, detox the the mold and, and whatever on her own. You said some things, and we'll just touch on this uh, in recapping. But these things literally changed your life. This sickness, uh, when you, when you just you ran through it so quickly. But when you talk about laying in the floor of your bathroom for 45 minutes for, because of the head, praying to die. I mean, I remember punching myself in the head, knowing that it's not a good thing to punch yourself in the head. But I just couldn't stop myself. It just hurt so bad. And, and you ran through that story, but my heart stopped when you told that. I understood the pain, you know, that mm -hmm. you, and people that are watching this, that are going through some of this, they're getting this as well. Um, and you just, because of your integrity or whatever, you just tried to push through it all. This mm -hmm. is just what a man does. We work through it. You just keep on going. Yeah, you just have to keep, take the you have to keep going. And, but you went through some, some tough times, seeking treatment, mm -hmm. spending money, doing lots of testing. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then you start doubting yourself and think, well, maybe it's all in my head. And ironically, it was all in my head. <laughs> I, I had to really start stopping and thinking before I opened my mouth yeah. because things would just pop out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Why can't I, I can't function? You know, things are just popping out of my mouth. And my wife would say, Kurt, I can't believe you just said that. And then I'd say, well, what? What? What, what, what did I just say? Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing too, the, the, the four second memory or whatever. Oh my gosh, it was so bad. I was, you know, when I was home for all that time, I'm painting the back room. I must have gone in the garage or something. Five hours later, I go in the back room. Here's the paintbrush. I'll, I forgot I was painting the back room. You know, ridiculous things like that, but it, it's so much better it's now. It's so much better. It's amazing. So let me ask you this: the headaches. Uh, mm -hmm. are, are you still having headaches? Uh, it's there. You know, coming going a little bit, but but each time, like I said, it's kind of a roller coaster. The highs keep getting higher, and yeah. the lows keep getting not as low. You know, as I tell the other patients, you know, you got to expect that it's going to be, you know, uh, up and down. But it's it's just keeps getting better. The noise in my head. Oh my gosh! And, and the doctors would put tinnitus. I said, I know what tinnitus is. I had tinnitus before. This is not tinnitus. This is a loud noise mm -hmm. inside my head that is like, yeah. 
so so loud that I think it made me talk louder because okay. l like I can't hear and and laying in bed trying to go to sleep was when it was the worst and I would concentrate so much on relaxing like you know meditate or whatever you know relax everything and it was just so loud and then ten minutes later I realized I'm thinking about twenty different things again and you know can't shut my my brain down and uh, so that's the noise so is gone. Better. Yeah, the, the noise is, is so much better. In fact, the first week that I went back on to the healing thing, it gets out of your brain, it was it was like totally gone. And then because we flushed so much stuff back You're in my system, it, it kind of came back some. But now it's receding again. My um, you know have moments where the brain fog is a little bit there and and, and stuff. But uh, it, it's so much better. And I'm um, being able to read, not having the the horrible headache all the time. Well, thank you for sharing this with everyone. It's been sure. an encouraging oh, glad story. To. Yeah, oh, it's really, uh, you know, they gave me my life back. It's, it's really <laughs> amazing.